Folks, uh, what a joy it is to be with you. You pray for me. I'm going to Malaysia this uh, week. There's a leadership conference, and you pray for me as I speak to the Malaysian believers, pastors, and um, we are living in amazing time. Asia is becoming one of the fastest growing region when it comes to Christianity. The West is turning their backs from God, but the East, we're just beginning to come to know and grow in the Lord. Amen? So pray for me. <clears throat> Last Sunday, we talked about when you stumble, what must you do? When you stumble, what must you do? Get up. Grow up. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. When you stumble, what must you do? Get up. Grow up. Don't stay down. If you didn't hear that message, get the DVD and listen to that. I think it's life changing. How many of you like tests? Be honest with me. You like to be tested or you like tests? Testing people, testing others, testing materials. You like tests. You don't like tests. Be honest. You can only raise your hand once. You do not like tests. Raise your hand. You don't like. All right. Pretty honest. You like tests. Raise your hand. You like tests. Good. Hopefully, when the day is over, you will all raise your hand and you say, I like tests because I don't like tests. I like to blame it on my teacher because sometimes they don't know how to explain the purpose of testing. I remember years ago, we have this uh, classification of teachers. Ito terror, ito terror. Do you have those teachers? You don't want to be under their class because their whole objective is to flunk you. See, they don't know the purpose of testing. But testing is good. For example, to put up this building, we have to test the cement. We have to test the structural uh, steel bar. Why? You want to know. It's for your good. Do you go through physical testing? Phys your health. Do you go through testing? Doctors, doc, docs, mga doctor, do you go through testing? Why do you want to test the people? Why? You want to know their blood, heart. But I discovered something. Testing is really, if you understand it, it's always for our good. But it's one thing to know the results. It's another thing to do anything about it. Last Monday, I visited my doctor, and she scolded me. You know why? Because 2011, I had an MRI to examine my neck, my uh, joints, and they discovered something is wrong with C3, C4, and my muscle is uh, affected by the nerves. So. I had atrophy of the muscle, except there's a problem. By the grace of God, I don't feel pain. By the grace of God, I have complete motion. So I didn't bother to do anything about it. But this year, the Lord impressed upon my heart, do something about it. Have it check, check. I only did it because my friend, my classmate, Dr. Chua, uh, I discovered is a specialist in physical rehab, and uh, she's a doctor that looks at the muscle and the nerves. So I went to see her, and she said, look, I gave you another test, 2011 versus 2014. She said, look at the result. Before only C3, C4, you know now, C2 is affected, C3 is affected, C4 is affected, but it's C5, okay? Even C5 is affected already. Everything is affected. She said, if you don't shape up, if you don't listen, if you don't take action, it's going to be bad for you. You know, can I tell you something? Every day this week, I've been in physical rehab. I'm taking certain uh, medicine to really help me with my nerves. I'm taking it seriously. And I realize spiritually, many of us are like me. God reveals something to you. God tells you your weakness. You are tested and you flunk the test like Abraham, but you do nothing about it. By doing nothing about it, it's not going to get better. 
So this morning, I'm going to talk to you about test. This is the final test of Abraham. You will not find God asking Abraham to do anything anymore after Genesis chapter 22. This is his final exam. Do you want to know what's the final exam? If you want to know whether you are growing in the Lord or not, listen to this message. Our series has always been on that triangle of blessings. Just quick review. We've been discussing God's triangle of blessings. This is the life of Abraham. You are blessed to bless. Say that with me. You are blessed to bless. And in order to be a blessing, you must focus on God, intimacy with God. You respond in faith. Real faith results in obedience. As long as you are in that triangle, I guarantee you, sooner or later, you'll experience true blessing and you'll be a blessing to others. That is the series on Abraham. But sometimes Abraham gets out of the triangle. He does not focus on God. He focuses on people. Sometimes he focuses on something else. You need to understand God's purpose is for us to be in that triangle of blessing. So let's look at Genesis. Are you ready? Chapter 22, verse 1. Everybody, let's read Genesis 22, verse 1. If you don't mind, let's read this together. It came about after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Notice, after these things, what these things? If you look back, 21, 22, 23, 24, Abraham went through a lot of testing. He flunked, he passed, he flunked, he passed, but he went through a lot. For example, after these things, what things? Abraham gave up his other son, Ismael. Abraham surrendered his mistress to the Lord. If you look back some more, Abraham encountered Abimelech. Remember? He compromised. If you look back some more, Abraham obeyed God in crucial point of his life, and sometimes he planned. He left his country, amazing step of faith. He left his nephew in obedience, amazing step of faith. He flunked with Pharaoh. He flunked with Abimelech. He passed with Ismael. He, he was able to obey God. Sometimes he flunked, sometimes he passes. So after these things, the Bible tells us God, notice, what did God do? Tested Abraham. You like to be tested? Can I tell you something? God will test you. When the devil tests you, it is to make you down. But when God tests you, it is to build you up. The Bible is very clear. God tests us. But this test is unique. You know why? Look at the next verse. He said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. Go to the land of Moriah. Offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Now, I don't know about you. If God were to ask you to take your son, your only son, offer him. Will you do it? Now, before you jump to conclusion, what in the world is God doing? Before we condemn God, I will teach you how to study the Bible. When you study the Bible, it is like reading a letter. If it is a three-page letter, you don't read the first page, and then you stop reading page two, page three. You read the entire thing. When you study the Bible, you don't stop with the first verse, second verse. You read the entire chapter. And then you read the entire context. Then you read the entire book. Then you read the entire Bible. Then you will understand who God is. So before you jump to conclusion, crazy God asking him to do something. Remember, God is against child sacrifice. He made that very clear in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Deuteronomy. You are not supposed to do what everybody else is doing, sacrificing their son. However, this may confuse you. So be patient. Can you be patient? And follow me as I teach the Bible. Now, question. God tested Abraham. What can you learn about testing? Quick review. Everybody, let's look at what the Bible has to say about testing. Everybody, let's read this together. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter what? Trials. Same word, testing. When you encounter testing, when you encounter problems, everybody read knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. Notice the purpose of testing. 
is to reveal what's lacking in your life to build you up. So, is testing good or bad? Good, but I still don't like it. Now, I hope you begin to change your mind. How do you know the quality of your spiritual life unless you are tested? How do you know the quality of the cement mix unless it goes through tests? How do you know if this medicine is good or not unless it goes through testing? How do you know spiritually you are healthy and not sick? How do I know spiritually, I'm, physically, I look okay on the outside? Yes or no? Do I look okay? You better say yes. But you know what? Something's wrong. C3, C4, C5, C6. So you pray for me. You pray for a miracle that I will restore, that the pinched nerves will be removed. I will not have pain. See, I don't have pain. But outwardly, I look okay. If I don't do anything about it, the doctor said, serious problem will occur. The same thing with you spiritually. Are you healthy? You don't know. I hope you are. But you'll be tested. And the testing will show whether you respond properly or not. And then God's purpose is to build us up. So everybody, what should be your attitude? Verse 2, one more time. Consider it what? Joy, my brethren, when you encounter testing. Why? Because the testing of your faith will produce what? Something in you. You know, this is a quotation that I said Learn this quotation. Spiritual maturity is our habitual, Christ-like response to stress and problems. For some people, their spiritual maturity is still lacking, and that's why their habitual response is different. Everybody look at me. Look at your life. Every time you're under stress, every time there is a problem, how do you respond? For some people, they get angry. You need to mature. For some people, they drink alcohol. That's the response. Under stress, they take drugs. For some people, if they are tempted, what's their habitual response? They give in to temptation. So I don't know how you are doing, but you need to grow so that your automatic habitual response is Christ-likeness. Do you want to test each other? Sige, tapakan mo yung paan nila. Try to step on your neighbor's feet. And then let's see how they respond. Well, I'm just joking, okay? But the truth is people will step on you. And when they step on you, what comes out reveals whether you are spiritually mature or you are not. If you are criticized, if people badmouth you, what's your habitual response? Testing is always to build us up. The Bible tells us foundational. Let's read this together. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. So there's a big difference. Testing and temptation are not the same. Temptation is to destroy you. Testing is to build you up. We are tempted, verse 14, each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own Lust. You got to understand your personal, private weaknesses. And then you surrender that to the Lord. And you say, Lord, this is my weak areas. This is my Achilles heel. Last Sunday, we talked about Achilles heel. You have a weakness. You surrender that to the Lord. And God will do something about it. So today's message is very simple. Everybody, read this together. Surrender your Isaac. What does that mean, surrender your Isaac? If you want to pass this test, if you want to understand the pinnacle of the Old Testament book of Genesis, I will suggest this is Genesis chapter 22, the highlight of Abraham's life. Because after this, you don't hear God testing Abraham anymore. This is the test. Isaac. What's Isaac? What does it mean, surrender your Isaac? Isaac, look at verse 2, everybody. God said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. Isaac can be God's promised blessing. It is something good. But Isaac can become a problem when you begin to love the blessings of God more than 
God himself. You see, Isaac can become an idol if you are not careful. In order to help Abraham become all the kind of man God wants him to be, in order for Abraham to become a godly man, God wanted Abraham to know. Abraham, you need to watch out the issue of the heart. Isaac is a promised blessing. But I have discovered many times blessing can take the place of God in your life. I remember a guy. He was two billions in debt. And he prayed. His life was changed. And God blessed him. Got out of debt. But then, with that blessing of God, granting him a lot of money, his heart slowly but surely turned toward the blessing. Friends, I don't know what your Isaac. Let me give you a simple definition. Isaac can become idolatry. What is idolatry? Listen now. Idolatry is anything or anyone that takes the place of God in your life. Let me repeat. What's idolatry? Anything, anyone that takes the place of God in your life. When you begin to love that thing, when you begin to love that person more than you love God, that's idolatry. Why is God so concerned with Isaacs, with idolatry in our lives? If you notice, idolatry is the root cause of almost all sin, according to a man of God. He said, look at the Ten Commandments. In the Ten Commandments, what is the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because all sin will result after you have other gods in your life. Sex. People say, well, sex is something that I cannot control. The reality is this. You love sex more than you love God. Talk about money. Why? Because you put your confidence in money and not in God. You see, how do you identify your Isaac, your idolatry? Anything that takes the place of God in your life. For example, if your confidence is in this person, that person becomes God in your life. That's idolatry. That's your Isaac. You see, it may be something good, but then it takes the place of God. Now, let me ask you, do you have any Isaacs in your life? All of us have. All of us. I don't have to say, are you idolaters? We think of idolatry as idols, physical objects. Ah, uh-uh. In the Bible, it talks about idolatry of the heart. For some people, it's family. They make their family number one. They used to serve God. They used to come early. And because God gave them families, children, they became number one. Be careful. Because God wants to protect you from idolatry. You know why? Because idolatry gives you false promises. Idolatry tells you only what God can fulfill. For example, you see many famous actors, actresses. You will think, wow, if I'm popular, I'll be happy. So popularity becomes your idol. The truth is this. Actors, actresses may be popular, but are they happy? You may be thinking money will make you happy. So you pursue after money. Look at me. If money can take the place of God in your life, then all the rich people should be the happiest people in the world. They're not happy. Some people think it's relationship. If I will have a boyfriend, if I will have a girlfriend, if I get married, I will be happy. <laughs> That's idolatry. You know why? You ask all of these married people after getting married. Oh, I know. Huh. Praise God. Because... We put God first. My wife has this quotation. PTC is a bonus for her. My wife is a bonus for me. But the truth is this. No person, no matter how good, can take the place of God in your life. Only God, only Jesus can satisfy your innermost longing. Praise God. <laughs> Beware of idolatry. So, maturity is surrendering your eyes up. The problem is some of us don't even know our Isaac. It can be something good. 
Now, let me ask you a question. What will you do if you were Abraham? Let's find out. Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, Isaac his son. He split wood for the burnt offering, arose and went to the place of which God had told him. The Bible tells us Abraham rose early in the morning. Can I teach you how to surrender your Isaac? It is the result of intimacy with God. You know why by this time, Abraham has been walking with God for almost 40 years. By this time, remember, Isaac was given to Abraham after 25 years of waiting. Yes or no? 25 years. But by this time, Abraham, I mean Isaac was no longer, was no longer a young kid. Abraham has been tested. Abraham has been refined. Abraham knew the Lord. Understand? God will never allow you to be tested beyond your ability. The testing comes progressively. By this time, Abraham knew God. You know why? The evidence of intimacy with God is prompt obedience. You surrender promptly. Say that with me. When you surrender, surrender promptly. Because delayed obedience is disobedience. Now, most of us know what God wants you to do. In fact, as I speak to you today, God will speak to you, and God will tell you, all right, make a decision. That is what I want you to do. But you know what we are expert in? Okay, Lord, I like that. Uh, but uh, not now, not now. Abraham obeyed promptly. Now, don't ask me if he discussed this with his wife. I have no idea. Okay? Don't even ask me what happened that night. Did he sleep? Did he not sleep? But one thing I can tell you, you want to learn to surrender? If you know God, you will surrender promptly.